Just for them live screen on me. Must be close something. No, he's live now, Freedom. Can you see him? Okay, there's no one to talk to. Talk to myself. Yeah, but you never see him anywhere, do you? Yeah. Good people. Talk on. Yeah, they're going to talk on us in a minute now. All the justice will be in there. It was bad before, hasn't it? Yeah. Right, I can't see myself in the screen, what I'm talking about. Don't need to see yourself, do you? Yeah. So you know what your facial expressions are like. No, he just starts his quickly. Yeah. Not worse, not like yourself, I think it would be better. No, yeah. It'd be better, probably. Put the back of yourself to look out on the screen to talk to people. Yeah, but you know you look the same, do not you? Yeah, because the chat's working. Hi Mark, you can see Brian all right yet? Hi Mark, sorry about this, I can't see, I can't see you, I can't see on my screen, it's gone off the screen, but you can see me, so. That's I'll, all good. I'll clear it out with the pros. Right yeah, I can see, no, that was too bad, but I thought nightmare. <laughs> Whoa, till you would be. Yeah, that's all good. Everyone, can you hear me? Not the, not the ones for yes and twice for no. Is anyone there can hear me? Not <laughs> 27 only, two in the chat. Two, put your thumbs up. Two thumbs up up to now, that's really power. Sorry for being delayed. The, the computers want gremlins in it. Uh, the computer's working, but there's no screen for me to see. I know myself talking to you. It's a bit, a bit hard to do, obviously, because you're usually looking at yourself and think what you have to say, and then you, you think what you're thinking about, and you can rem remember yourself by your expression on your face. You know what I'm on about. Probably like having a shave in it without a mirror. Fucking nightmare is. I'll wait till you all come on. Not all. Well, we had loads in the chat and all that. No, the very beginning, there was about 30 people on. So I was 32 on already. So I'm still waiting for you. Thank you very much, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I can't see much. I can see the chat. You can ask me questions still. So I'm going to go to the bottom mark. I'm missing. Love you all the well. Russians, Russians, bright, would oh, yeah. I just said that away. It might be MI5. <laughs> MI5 are fucking bugging me. <laughs> and all sorts of has been going funny. My phone's been going funny. The computer's been going funny. Well, guys, it's two weeks to one since the Mr. Tin, tin Man, the little Doyle. You're getting the rest in in two weeks. Two weeks to monitor, Jamie. Where's the police? Where's the police? Two weeks, he said. Two weeks. Where's the police? Yeah, fucking dope while you look now. I will never come back on again. <laughs> he said two to three weeks. So let's give him another eight, day, eight days, I think it is. I think it's two weeks tomorrow. So it's the festive. It will work out the 2nd of April. So the festive, <laughs> the festive April's due, April's Fool's Day. So this year we're going to have it on the 2nd because you're going to look like the fucking fool on the April Fool's. <laughs> 2nd of April because there's no place coming. It's all in your delusional fucking ginger chucky head. Ding dong, there's no police coming and ding dong, looking around the bend. He said he's been liaising with the police. They've been telling him, I've been on the phone to the Cleveland police. They've got a new CID room where I contact them every day. I give them all the information. But why would you need to give them the information? All they do is take the computer. They've only got all the computers for the information. Whatever else they need, they're just come and fucking take this one. They're fucking around the twist, but they don't need it because you're on there all day and you're sending all the messages. So, oh, he said, he said, I've got ginger hair. Fucking hell. That, that, to him, that's malicious communication. It's fucking mental. So I'm laughing with you. So, so what he tried to do with us, how sneaky he was. When that Higgy was, Higgy was about, it was about January, February 2019. I think it was. So that, that, that was like July. Anyway, it was, I can't remember what it was. It was, it may have been, maybe uh, just after it. So he contacted me and all. My name's 
Dick Higgy said, I've done a video about you. I watched it and it said the five hardest men in history is the Virgin Britain's Britain's hardest men. He put the five Britain. He said, and I think number one was Brian Cockrell. He said, because his power and his size, his, his hand speed is phenomenal. And he was bullying me up, obviously bullying me up. Obviously, I didn't know what he was. So I befriended him. He was coming on the phone. I said, all right, mate, how are you doing? He said, oh. So I, I was going to get a wedding dress for Emma. And it was from North Allen, where Tin Foil and robbed the door from. So once we got there, she went in with Kerry. Fucking women they were in there about three hours. So Decker was on the phone to me. He was crying on the phone, going, What it is, bro? He said, I'm getting bullied. He said, nah, I want you. Can you do me a favour? Would you walk in the ring with me? And I'd be like anyone asking me, you know, I'm like, how soft they are. So I went, Listen, bro, I'm going to bully your family. I said, Of course, I'll walk in the ring with you. I'll, I'll walk in the ring. He said, Because I think I'm going to get attacked. I said, You won't get attacked to our farm there. I'll promise you that. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. It's all lovely, lovely, dubby, and all that. Love you, bro, obviously, and all that. I said, love you too. Then you, you, you enjoy yourself. Anyway, Dad, come on, Dad, talk me. Nice as pie again. He said, oh, he's so happy now. You, you're in his corner. And you're going to be going in the ring and that with him and, and helping him. He said, he's a different man and all that stuff. And he was coming on full time going, and picking his teeth and eating. I was like, fucking hell, you're very rude. You just, I hate people eating when they're talking to you. You want to make these noises. So I thought, anyway, so I phoned him for and said, Oh, there's a man right on the phone. It's called Decker Hickey. He wants me to walk in the ring. He does bare knuckle fighting and he does uh, fighting. So he went, he got jealous. He went, me and Sh about half an hour later for me back. He went, me and Shirley think you don't want to get involved in that. It's like cannibalistic fighting, bare knuckle fighting. I said, well, that's what I did, Jamie. That was my, my game. Biting the fucking nose off and biting the ears off. Said, that was my game. That's what I did. So I said, it's, to me, it's just a, oh, it's just me. It's the way you fight. I said, you've got God give you every single tool you've got in your body to fight, and you use every tool. You wouldn't go to, you wouldn't go to work and you had a set of pliers and use a fucking pair of tin snips just to use use the pliers because that was the job you need. Yeah, but it's a really, really kind of ballistic. All right. So anyway, he taught me out of it. Then he went, oh, he's a wrong you know, bro. I've just been found out he's a wrong He's a wrong he's, he's a pedo and all this stuff he was calling. So I thought he was just jealous, but he was telling the truth, obviously. So I pulled myself up. I didn't get away from him. He started phoning. There's another man phoned me called Mark. So this Mark who was phoning me. I was buzzing there. I thought, I thought that was the thing was ringing. And be over. So anyway, he said, this man called Mark. And I put him on his me, uh, coach. He said, he's a uh, boxing coach. He's, he's come there. He's glad, glad. No, I'm not going to go. Dundee, Dun where was it? Was it? Look, he was here. Montrose, Montrose, he was at. He said, hands are stone, stones are hands, whether it was stones, gym or something it was called. So he said, I said, oh, he said, yeah, look, after all the kids here and that, um, I do this, that, and the other, and he's doing really well and since you come on board. He's doing great. He said, he's, he's, his hands, he's getting his self, he's copying off your routines and training and stuff like that. Thanks for helping. I said, yeah, it's a pleasure to help anyone who's suffering with mental health. I said, I've had it, I've had it myself, my family members have had it. I said, I'll help anyone. He said, I can't thank you enough. So anyway, and he kept coming on, then he went, oh, do you want to come up and stay in the flat? I'll be with us. And uh, I was thinking, flat, I'm not going to fucking stay in a fucking flat when I live in a nice house. I'm not going to stay in a fucking one-bedroom flat in fucking Scotland, freezing cold. Anyway, he said, uh, then I found out, I got a phone call from somebody from Liverpool who said, watch that, take a higgy, he's a wrong one. Then I got a phone call from the Carlisle lads, and oh, the fucking ambulance come down. Oh, he's an ounce, he's a wrong one, he's a pedo, he's a sat deal, he's done all these things. I went fuck off, and then but the people were telling me I was in jail with them, so I knew they were 100% staunch. So I'd be like, like right, Mark, or Freedom, or anyone on here who I know, uh, I'll just go through you, uh, Mark Emerson. Uh, hello, mate. I hope you're okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just uh, Freedom. Please hit the like button. She's saying, racing lady. Are you racing lady? Lovely lady. She is there. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, Listen, lady, again, I think you just talk to each other. One has been waiting for Peter DeVox. Are your son? Hope you're okay. Hope you, the weather's been cold today. I bet your hands have been bad and your butt have been a bit sore because I'm freezing the night. Uh, ding, ding, ding. And that's about it on that. Right, so, so, get back to this. So, I, I started digging at them a little bit. So, I sat phone a few people from Cumbria who knew. And they went, no, he's a fucking wrong one. So, it went on about all stuff about him. So, Roger Dave, obviously, was friends with him at the time. So he ended up he ended up I had a bit of a thought out and I said, You you the fucking wrong you I am what it is, but I said, listen, listen, fuck off, don't phone me again. 
he said, well, but anyway, he got in with the tinfoil man. So the tinfoil man got in with him and wormed his way in with him. He says, I know, why don't we get somebody from Teesside? I'll go around. And he said, I'll get somebody from Teesside who's done something. they will come on your show and we'll expose them. But that was for tinfoil and just expose me more. So he was going up to drug dealers in parks and drug dealers in the town and people all over and saying, if you go on the show, I'll give you £150 with a coke and I'll give you £250 in cash. So that's what we were going to do with the tinfoil between them. So it was about, I think it was £150 each for the persons to go on to people and £250 with a coke. Oh, you fucking dirty low-life cunts. So anyway, the people contacted Emma and said, look, he's asked us to go and talk about Brian. But there's nothing to talk. He said, well, just say, make something up, anything. Just tell them a few stories. He said, and we'll, we'll, we'll put you on. So the, the kid went, I don't want to go. And he said, I'm not calling Brian. I heard him up to me. I know the family and that, he said, but I'm not going on. So he said, oh, if you're scared of him, I'll fight him, Dick, I said. I'll fight him, you'll fight me. So I got on the fucking floor and he's this new daft cunt. Wherever you are now, you, you fucking muck. It was about two, about 10 o'clock at night. I said, wherever you are at now, you fucking muck, piggy. I'll come and meet you tomorrow. I'll come fucking right now, you fucking coward, you shit house, trying to bribe people who are on drugs with money and cocaine. Go on, I said, you fucking that shit house, where you that fucking uh, tinfoil piece of fucking shit. I told you what he was a piece of shit. So he wormed his way in the deck and he went on the show. Call. Yeah, the trolls are really bad, and this and that. And you heard what Dale said. He even had Decker Higgy said that Jamie Boyle was his jawbreaker. He's fucking disgusting what he's, what he's saying. So Decker then was fucking shitting himself. So what did he do? Hello, is that a car? I'm going to put the tape record. I'll put the phone call on, right? You can hear it. He goes, is that the place? And Dave's with him because Dave was his friend. Dave was conned like I was with tinfoil. So Dodgy Dave's with him. Oh my, it's gone off. It's gone off. Bastard. It's gone off. Emma. So his live stream was still on, right? People could see him, but he's frozen now. People yeah. could see him, but um, uh, I'll just put gonna try, going to try fix it, going to to try fix, try fix now. So apparently the screen's frozen now, but. Um, and restart it. I'll put restart it. Yeah, restart. So, hold on two secs. Um, right. We're doing a live now, and it's like, uh, oh, he's saying, he's saying we're on. He's saying, he's saying you're on. Right, you. Can I see perfect? Brian, it's working again, but we've still got a black screen this end. Do you know what I mean? Oh no, because I can see I can see me and yours sort of thing. Right. So I can see me. But in yours, is that, the, is that to the live, is it, Yeah, this is on the live now. We're all on the live now. Everybody is here. But it's like, yeah, so they can see now. But Brian can't see. Doesn't matter. Brian can't. No, but. He can't see it on the screen when he's live. Sorry to Steve. Hey, Steve, Sonny. All right, Sonny. All right, brother. Tell us. So Brian can't. Right, yeah, I'm so all right, son. Love you all well. God bless you, son. Right, so what does it mean when he's got a black screen? Am I ready to go now? Can I talk? Can, we only, can I even put the thumbs up? Can you hear me? Fucking nightmare. This is fucking disaster. It's the Russians are coming in, I think. <laughs> I'll give the fucking Russians it. Yep, Rock, I agree. I hope you can hear me. Mark Emerson, put your thumbs up, even though you... Or Rock, put your thumb up if you can hear me. I can't, I can't tell. Please check it now, see if he can see, see you now. 
Nobody can see me, don't they? Yeah, you can. We yeah, can, yeah, can, see, we can see you perfect. Right. Cooey! Cooey, everyone, it's me! It's me! It's me! Thank you, Steve. Thank you, son. Love you, Steve, son. God oh, bless. It's me, David Mayo. We did the job. We did the job. Right, oh, it's never ended. So, getting back to these two, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. With which one are you on about? They're both fucking dumb. Uh, what, what's that film? I need some snow, snowball in the face. I'm a million the fucking film now. Dumb, dumb, and dumb and dumber there. Fucking dumb and dumber trying to take on the tax man. Trying to infiltrate people to get information on me. We couldn't get nothing off anyone in Teesang. So the kid ended up phoning and said, listen, stop phoning me. One of my relations works for the courts high up. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna report it to the police. So they shit themselves, they shit their pants. So what he done, he went, oh thin file, and then they went. We had somebody on that blow the socks off him to the, them words type of thing. And he was going to do this, and they're going to do that, and going to do this, but they never, because it was lies. So you couldn't get them on to lie about me, even when you were paying £150 each and £250 with the coke. How low are you? How low can you get in file? So then you went, oh, Decky, he come on, and went, Cockrell's already been round and threatened an eight-year-old in tin file. He's been round and threatened an eight-year-old. No, it's got to be an eight-year-old. Can't be 60 or 40, 70 or 30 or 56 or whatever. Eighty-odd-year-old woman is threatened. I told her not to go on the show. What eighty-odd-year-old woman? You're fucking round the bend. The both of you is totally round the bend. So they never went on. But what did happen, Derek? QE, are you, are you open in the Philippines still? Just a wave to Derek. <laughs> Dirty Derek going to jail for about eight to ten years, all the time. So I started speaking to people from Carland. So they said to me, "What it was, Brad? It was the get the woman we know, a friend of ours." She's a bodybuilder, and she's a bodyguard, and she does um, uh, um, security for women. She's a security guard for women. So she sat and told me, and she said, oh, he went into a nightclub, Decker. I can't remember, maybe in the 80s or something. He went into a nightclub, and he went to the toilet upstairs. As he went to the toilet, you have to go past the dormer up the stairs. Went to the toilet were upstairs, went into the toilet, grabbed the girl from behind, tried to pull her thing down, try to give her one from behind. And then this other girl, she started screaming, and another girl went, help, help. The girl getting assaulted in the toilet off a man. So he ran out the toilet and ran down the stairs. And he used to go there every week, they said. And when after that night, he never went back to that nightclub. He was then formally charged for that, and he was arrested. And he went to court, he was found guilty of that. He was found guilty of uh, sexually abusing that woman in the toilet. Just stayed away, I thought he's wrong. Well, can't, can't handle us for that then. What happened is, he was working with a man called John McLean. Now, John McLean's not the one that's fucking die ass, but he is like him. He's a great lad. John trained to be a barrister, really, really intelligent. He does a lot of financial stuff for people and helps people. But he was helping Decker to do the movies. He was helping Decker to do the videos and stuff. And he was making him good money, doing really well with him. So, John's missus is a nurse, really lovely, lovely lady as well. So, they got, they got him great. And brilliant. So anyway, John all of a sudden got this thing said to him, he, I don't know if it was his, I think it was his son, his son say, I think he was 14, 15 year old, Decker on the train doing that to himself, you know, that thing where he's on the train, pulling away with the train uh, in the toilet and say, and lays on with someone through the mirror where he's got the phone watching himself in the mirror and then sending the message to somebody else. Um, Who's watching it on, on a phone, another phone? Fucking weirdos, absolute weirdos. So, how could any man stand in there when it was a train on the day? It was a day, daytime, it was about 12, 12, 12, 12 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. And there's kids walking about on the train, women and men, but they the guard and things like that. And he's in the toilet. Okay. And imagine, imagine where, how could you get that thing working down below when you know you're on the train for the children and women and people walking about and the train? Anyone could just fucking. Walk, 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 and walk in, or whatever. So he stood there doing his thing on the train, and think, doing what he did on the train was disgusting. So that was sent to his son. Then another one got sent to his to his daughter. Another one about him was sent to his daughter. So John, being conversed with the law, he said, I, he said, I checked up. I said, that was my, my kids confessed. I'm not shit about calling me grass. So he phoned up the police. He said, Look, 
I, I'm working with a man called Derek Higgy. And really, really strange behaviours coming from the phones that I'm getting about him doing what he's doing with himself and doing these other things and real disgusting videos are coming out. Same same as we were getting off the tin pile, same memo. So he said, Well, if you come into the police station and do a Claire's Law or a Sarah's Law, I don't know which one he did. So he went in, I think, I can't remember which is which one, Sarah's Law, I think, is the one if you beat someone. And Claire's Law is a sexual one, I think. I'm not 100%, but whichever it is. So he went into the police station. So you, what you do is you've got somebody like that and you think, say, for instance, you're working at work with someone, your school teacher, just to talk and say, can you see? So I think, sure, he's a Roman. You have the you have the fundamental right to go to the police and say, Tommy Smith just started working with me. I'm not sure about him, but I don't want to make any allegations. And they're taking a private room. You meet the police and they get the records up. And on the records, he was done for a 13-year-old child he was a 13 year old child. He was done for a 16 year old every two years or something. The pattern it is. So over, five, over six years or something, he'd been done. Remanded about four times, I think it was, for different people 15 year olds, 14 year olds, and anal, anal rape on another one. And he got off. He got remanded to Durham for about six months, I think it was. And he got out. But what happened is he got out and he went and threatened to pedal bomb the house. So the shit himself dropped the charge. And so Rhonda who was his girlfriend at the time, she started getting scared then because she's got kids. So this is where this is how Jesus comes in. So Rhonda decided to befriend Emma and tell her, I think he's a woman. What do you think I should do? So she said, I'm going to go down. So she was when they would go down and they said, oh, you can't come in. They do a Claire's Law. But what we could do is we could do it over the phone. Nine, 99 times out of 100, you've got to go in. Well, you've got to go 100 out of 100 because the COVID is on. They had to still give the diverse information, but she got on the phone. And what did you do? Record it and give it to us. So she says, I'm such, um, my name's such and such. I live at such and such. Uh, I've got a man called Derek Higgy. I'm really concerned. I've got children and I'm, I'm in fear that he could abuse my children. So the police won't come on. She said, He's a sick. He said to John, the other one said, the other police station said, He's a significant risk to women and children. If I was you, I would disband him. What a big business you've got with him. Go his your way, go his way, make something up, don't let him know you've been here. Don't, but by law, you're not allowed, John. They won't tell everyone, but John phoned me straight away and told me. He said, Oh, I'm telling you first to let you know he's a wrong So he got he came on my show before anyone, John came on and told the full truth. It was deemed a significant risk to women and children. A significant risk. So he then stopped going near, and then all of a sudden, he got a bullet, got bullets put through the door, not shot, same shit again, trying to frighten him. So he ended up moving from where he was to the safety of his children, moved further down south, where he's, he's relishing now, he's doing really, really good in the community, helping people and stuff. But John told me straight away. So then Rod will come on. She went, look, she breath, she's best friend with Emma. So she said, look, I've just been on the phone to Carlisle Police. And because the COVID's on, I couldn't go in and sit in the office where you sit in the room where they show you everything. So she read it out on the computer. She went, in such and such, 19, say, I can't remember really the dates exactly, say 1984, just for citizens. I think he was about 20 when he first went to jail. 1980, whatever, for something. He was jailed for sexually abuse and a 14-year-old. 19, such and such. Two years later, he was done for having non-penetrative tech sex with an 11-year-old. Then it was a 13, not it was either 11 or 13, no, it was a 13-year-old, I think, a 13-year-old, 13-year-old, sorry, 13-year-old. And then he was, he had none penetrative sex. I'm sure it was 11 or 13-year-old. I'm almost certain. See, I've got it wrong, but whatever it was. So she said, can you say that again, please? She said, she was shocked. And she said, no child. She went, he said, she had non penetrative sex with, I'm sure it was an 11-year-old, a girl. Um, I'm almost certain, so yeah, it was an 11-year-old. And then such and such, he supposed to have graped one in a cornfield or a, a wheat field, I think it was. That was another one. So there was six. She said, to me, it's the same pattern. We had the same thing as what the police said down at the other end of the country, right down the road, fucking London way. And then the same, Carlisle police are the same. It seems to be a same pattern where it's every two, every two, 18 months or two, yeah, he does it, same pattern. And then such and such, she was, 
charged him, found guilty in. I think it was Carlisle Police, there, Carlisle Courts. He was found guilty of sexual abuse of the woman in the toilets. Now, for so anyone who's sticking up for this man, you've got to be not right in the fucking head. You've got to be really, really deranged that he wanted that, that type of person not around you. His own brother won't let him in the house. He's often a bit like the other one, the Tin Man. So he's not allowed near children, the, the Tin Man. He's not allowed near any of them. Any his family members won't let him near them. They won't let him in the house. Uh, I'm not going to see my phone's on the drink. <laughs> the fucking never ended the night, it is. So, what happened then is he was doing a documentary with Dodgy Dave down Liverpool with Mandy Jameson. Now, this is how Jesus comes in again, back and us up. Toby Station, you okay, son? So, she, she, she knew Emma because Emma went out with her cousin for seven years. Liverpool, she lived in Liverpool. She moved from Red Cat to Liverpool. I've never seen her for years, you see. So, anyway, came on. Mandy Jameson is going to be doing a documentary with Decker Higgy about a knife campaign, which is a good thing for Mandy because her son was stabbed to death. He was only about 13, I think. And he got killed. So I said, I said, hey, man, you can't really go and tell her because I think this has been bit out. I said, it's awkward, this one, because if you tell her, they'll think, oh, he's only told to be awful. Anyway, Decker then said, Someone else in Liverpool told her about the tax man or something. And she went, I don't know the tax. Oh, no, so about Brian Cox. I don't know Brian Cox or Emma Cockrell. And then they said Emma's real. And then she went, my Emma. My Emma, I mean, like a sister. She went, I, I love Emma. She's my fucking sister. She's a big sure she was. She was my fucking sister. I've not known for like for years. And there's a lovely girl. She said, Emma wouldn't call me. And I would never call her. So I thought, Jesus, again. So then Emma and I were talking on the phone for about a couple of hours. The women do. I hadn't seen each other for three years. She said, oh, what's happened? She said, she told them exactly what happened. So she said, what I'm going to do, I've been told by about 20 different people, but he's a woman. So what I'm going to do, she said, I'm going to get the Claire's or Sarah's or whatever one it was to see if it's right. She said, I know you just tell me the truth and I believe you, but I've got to do it right because I'm doing an anti knife campaign for me. So I you understand you, Mandy, I said. And I've, I will have support you, and Emma will, if we can, in any way, shape, or form, help you. If you notice, there's any speeches anywhere with you, I'll go anywhere with you, help you. I said, Oh, thank you so much. She said, Oh, you're the same lovely, lovely man. And Emma's a lovely girl. She said, Yeah, so I know you're telling the truth. So she went on the, on the thing, like I'm doing now, and said, Listen, you, Decker Higgy, I had you in my house. I've been to the PlayStation today. And you, you, you're my lovely, she said. Lovely person, she said. You're my lovely. And not allowed to be near children. You're a significant risk to children and women. And you were with our, my, our two children all day in my house. Tell me about these other people bullying you. When you're, you're a wrong and you, you're a wrong and don't ever come back to Liverpool again because you won't leave Liverpool. Believe me. Believe me, my family, because their family are fucking, they're all top, top. But my son has to fight as well. Well, champions. Not like amateurs, world champions, and uh, she said, Don't come back to Liverpool again because you will not get out of Liverpool. So she said, You stopped it. So the decker went on, and Jamie went, Oh, Cockrell's only threatened Andy Jameson, and all that. No, she came on. To, and by the way, I didn't, Brian Cockrell didn't threaten me, and Emma didn't threaten me. Emma's like a sister to me, I've known her for years. She went out with my cousin, and Brian's a second big teddy bear. He's absolutely lovely. What a lovely man he is. She said, uh, what a lovely man that uh, for Emma to be with, and I'm dead happy and for the both of them. But no one threatened, can threaten me but the, with the family of what she said. So all that shit, him and Tinfile try to pretend that we were threatening them again. Loads of fucking cabbage. This is what's been going on this asshole for years. Constantly going around people, trying to get in with it like Decker. So Decker, I offered him out of the fight, and he phoned the police on me. Grasped me up the place. He said, Oh, he's, one, he's, he's coming to get me in some fucking shit. He said, But you'll hear it on the We're going to put up, put up tonight. So he's telling everyone in the chat, Hello, mate, mate. <coughs> yeah, rock. I don't understand why people do these things. You learn right and wrong. So because you know, you learn when you're a fucking kid. I mean, to sit on a train doing that to yourself in front of a fucking train with 100 people or something on a train. How could you physically, mentally get a Erection to do it and then sit there about doing that for about 10 minutes till he whatever he does to himself, you know what about fucking vile to me. I'd be sick to the stomach if I walked in caught something like that. I'd probably punch him, fuck up, go out, throw him through the window. The punch. So he went to the police, oh, he said he, 
he's a gangster and all that. He doesn't say on this one. He did on another one. He told so. So she contacted us back. Rhonda, she said, oh, have you had a phone call being threatened? We went, yeah. He said it was uh, Jamie and Shelley by all phoned up. He said, I'll tell you what accent. This is before we even got threatened. This is about, we got threatened, but it was about two or three minutes. So she said, I'll tell you what it was. It was Shelley and Jamie by all phone Decker. Phone him up and threaten him on the phone, threaten to burn his house down and pretend to be a traveller. So that I fucking cut your throat. I just thought, I didn't know it was him then, but one that told it was his, it was him. So I offered him out again. I said, Where do you, where do you want to meet me? You scruffy cunt, tramp, smelly fucking uh, tramp. You look like uh, you remind me of fucking what do you call him? That horrible one that burnt the kids, can't believe his name now. Freddy Krueger. I said, you look like Freddy Krueger. You, you look like Freddy Krueger. So at the time, before this, the first fight, I was about 22, 23 stone. He was only 16 stone. He said, how much do you have? I said, I'm up, I'm up to 23 stone. And he went, oh, brilliant. He said, so when he offered him out, he went to the other lad, he said, the other lad said, you're not going to be able to beat him. Not in a million years. Not in a million years. So he's asked when he phoned the police. Gone to the police on me again. So these two have been doing this to people for years and years. What's happened now? The both of them have been out with the both. There's an old saying, What comes around goes around, it's come right back, back round and beat you tinfoil right on your ass, hasn't it? All the lies you've been spouting out about me, all the shit you've done with Dick Higgy, all the other people, you know, all the wrong ones you knock around with, all the wrong things, Darren G, all them lot, all them have been out with and found wrong ones, wrong ones. Or police informers. Love phone the police. So that's what's happened. So what happened after that was uh, John went on the shows and told everyone what he was. And he went on, uh, he went on, uh, what was it? Uh, Theory 8, he went on, I can't remember, 20 different shows he went on and let the whole world knows what he is. But he was still getting idiots believing that he was, I, he was this big super guy who could fight and all this. Oh, don't get me wrong, he could have a fight, but he wasn't in that league of top fighters. And the fights when he won the title, Julian Davies, Julian Francis threw that fight. He got six thousand pounds to throw the fight. That, that's what happened. That's what got on the show. He threw the fight. It was all fixed. He got six thousand pounds to, to fall down and pretend he was knocked out. Like a stoppage. I think it was a third round, second or third round. I think it was. Uh, yeah. So they put money on that to win a lot of money. The people from wherever. Hey, Steve, you all good mate. Mac and Mister. Yes, the right son. So we tried to go around to his side, tin foil getting people. And everywhere he went, they went, I'm not calling Brian Cock, I'm not calling them, they were called Tell and Terry. I'll tell them somebody else and the phone and tell me he's trying to get you and trying to get people who you've had fights with, who you've beaten the book. He said, Why don't you put your story across and say this and say that? Well, he did fight me, he did beat me. He hadn't told a lie. He beat me in a fight, he shouldn't be angry. Me and Brian have been friends for twenty odd years. And they were chasing him everywhere he went, he was getting chased. Now he gets battered everywhere he goes down Teesside. He's not allowed to come back to Teesside. You know, allowed in this area, same as same as Decker's going to be. He won't be allowed to come back where he goes. But uh, I mean, look at the fight with Dan, Dan, Danny Christie. Did believe Danny Christie was only twelve stone fighting a what sixteen stone man? You know what I mean? So how the fuck's he going to be? If he couldn't beat a twelve stone man, how could he beat a 22, 23 stone man? It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. And his ass went. So John ended up becoming good friends. John McLean. But I said, Rhonda, then he friend really threatened. So what happens is, I've got another record for you. So he goes round the shops. He's walking around the shops. He's talking. You can't see him. A bit like me. How oh, you can see me, I can't see you. So he says, Mum, can you remember that girl? I think I don't know if it was 13 or 11. The th yeah, the 13 year old who said I sexually abused it was all lies. She went, No, son. She said, The only time I found out, <laughs> the only time she said, No, son, the only time I found out, oh, no, I've gone off a fucking game. I've gone off. Fucking hell. No, it's still there. Oh, for fuck's sake, gone off again. What's going on with it? Just went off, both of Did that light all that there on the camera? I don't know what's coming on properly. No, it's not. That's because I've just touched that by accident. 
Now the whole lot just went off again. Fucking bar me this tonight. Fucking damn loose. I know. Uh, so, so anyway, sorry guys about this fucking computer. By the time we get through, it'll be fucking the doomsday. So, yeah, so Rhonda will be aware we haven't talked about Rhonda. So, Rhonda, okay, no, it's not his story. No, he's, he's, he's mum, meets him, he's walking around the shops. Do you know, you get like a palladium of shops where you've got Greg's and the butchers and your, your the co op and stuff like that. So, he's asked, like, a, where you go around the shops in the council estate. He's like he's getting something he can eat me eating and he goes, Mum, have you seen that there? What they've said. I'm a significant risk to children. If anyone reads that, they're gonna think I'm a paedophile. So I know I know Jacka, I know the real one there. So he's on mum, so he's, he must have been going to like me going to you like this going. Can you remember the other day? So you're all gonna go off that bam and say, Yeah, because I'm going, can you remember the other day? And your eyes are going like that. Can you remember the other day? And you're going like that. So you're gonna say, Yeah. So he says to his mum, I can imagine I say to his mum, he's going. Do you know that girl I was supposed to sexually abuse you? I don't know if it was 11 or 13, whatever. You remember, she, Rhonda said she told lies. I can't remember the full thing, but she can. Can you remember Rhonda, I think, said she told Rhonda before? She said, No, I only found out by Rhonda yesterday at the shops. I think she was getting her head on or something. <laughs> so his own mother come on and blew his fucking socks off him. No, she said, Oh, but I think it was maybe 11 or 13, wherever she was. I said she told lies and Rod Ronda told us before a few years ago something. She went, No, Derek, I can only remember Ronda telling me yesterday at the Palladium or something, wherever the fuck it was, the shops or something, from the shops. And I just couldn't stop laughing because I thought, You're a mum's group, you're a mum. She's an old woman. She's obviously not conversed in that type of stuff. So she blew up by telling the truth. Yeah, fucking 11 and 13 year old kids, fucking disgusting, bow. And Tinfoil's best mate goes up there drinking with him, partying out with him and all over. You imagine them two in the same room, fucking boom, 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 and Basil Brush, boom, 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 fucking hell, boom, 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 it's not the it's not the, it's not the problem we've got. They might be on the threesome with the dog. <laughs> Fucking dog. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, Rhonda came on. She said, I'm gonna keep my dog away from them too. She said <laughs> she was laughing her head off. So she was talking to Heather all the time before. So anyway, he threatened her with a gun. So she phoned the police. They went to his house. That was a fucking nine millimeter. I think it was a replica in the house, but if you get caught with it, even a replica, it's still the, the guidelines if you get caught with a firearm, even if it's a replica, you get five years. You get caught with bullets, you get 10 years. So, you get, I think, a machine gun's 15 years or something. But that's the guidelines, it's been five years. They kick her off again. So, we all know he's a copper. So, getting back to the, the other one who trained him in the gym, who was called Mark, and he was from Cameroon, he was from now, but he, he, he was from Scotland, sorry. So, he was from Montrose. All could only come out. He came on, he went, PC such and such to someone, we got somebody phone up. He said, oh, I'm just wondering about Decker Higgy. He's a significant risk to children. They said, oh, I'm the police, I'm the police, I'm an ex-police officer. And I've already checked his record. And we've gone through it all and everything's okay. So he, he was working with that copper. That was his handler, that police, police cop, that copper. And that was the one who was giving him a flat to stay in. He was working with that copper. That was his handler. Fucking wrong. And so he's the same tinfoil. Al, he's just that Mr. Tinfoil. When he Al phoned the authorities, my friends, I'm going to get you arrested. So all these fuckers were abusing kids. And doing all these horrible things to people getting off because they've got police handlers. Because, the, but the thing is, what happens? I didn't find out he's not good to the police no more because he's, yeah, James. It's all we've got the lot on video, mate. We've all got all of it recorded. We've got the ones he threatened to won't have a fight with me. He shits himself. The ones where he phoned the police on me. We've got Ronda's telephone conversation. We've got, uh, yeah, it was Jamie Boyle and Shelley got um, Derek to do it. She said, Derek, call them Derek. She got uh, Derek. She's got Derek, Derek to do it. She kept just all keep calling him Derek. He's the real name. She's got Derek to do it. She said, and she said uh, it was late, late on the night. And she said, you just finished your show. And he phoned, no, you were still on your show. And he was threatening you. He said it was him. It was him. So when I confronted him, he just denied it. But I can't see her lying. But when she phoned up the police station, when he's done one in 1980, such and such, when he was 20, one in such and such, when he was 22, one was 24, something. One well, she said it's like every two years, it's the same as the ones now. Same the same same MO as the other one, obviously it's the same record in different police stations, but the same thing the police said 
he's a significant risk to children and women. So he's not allowed near that near the uh, kids anywhere he goes now. Nobody let him anywhere near them. I don't blame them. Who would? Who would? I mean, if you said to someone, "What do you mean wrong?" And such and such, and then about fifty people come and told another fifty people, you think, "Poof, it's got to be right." This, but I would never call no one something like that unless they had hundred percent facts. I've got the hundred percent facts. I've seen the stuff from the police, from what she said. Uh, we've seen, we've heard the recording of the police woman talking in the police station because of the COVID's on. They couldn't physically, what they did say was uh, to run the, you can't divulge this, so you got her under arrested for divulging it. She said, yeah, but you got me. What have you done is he said to her, go on, ask, put, put the record in about me. He asked her to do it for the Claire's law, Sarah's law. And he got it and he could hear them talk. And when he was talking, that's when he was saying his mouth. They said this, that, and the other on, on, on the uh, recording. So that if anyone sees, hears that, but Rondon put it out, gives it to us. We put it out. Fucking right, I was put it out for kids. It's for kids' safety. If I didn't do it, and they got hurt. They'd say, why the fuck did Joe Cockrell not do that? You, you and your wife, you're disgusting you so. Do you know that man? Fucking hell, he knows the fucking bloody head, isn't she? Do you know that man was it? Was it H? Do you know that man was there uh, a Roman? Why didn't you put it out there and let everyone know? So we did. We put it out there and let everyone know. Same with John McLean. John McLean, God bless him. John got arrested. He was on tag for six months because you're not allowed to divulge the Claire Sarah's law. So only for the information of the person who asked for it, for his family members or a school teacher, say, asking to person me at school or whatever you're at, you're entitled to ask for the Claire's or Sarah's law. If you're working with someone, you think they're wrong or you think there's something not right about them, you go in the police station, you, make a, you, you don't make a statement, you just ask. You give your details, your credentials, and you say, look, I'm working with a certain person. You give his name and address and what he does. And then they look at it, and then they'll give, they'll give you an appointment to come back. And you go and sit down and then read it out on, on the record on the computer for you. But because it was a COVID, Rhonda had phoned. And when the phone said, I'll have to give you on the phone. She said, OK. And she recorded everything on the phone and give it to Decker. And Decker gave it back. So then she got off with it because Decker had actually got her to do it. Because when they got in with his phone, the recording was on his phone. So she said, I did it for Decker and he can he, he give me it back. He give, he give, give me it back on the phone. I recorded for him when she told the truth, but he got he got done for the firearm. I think guy at Chips or the fuck called him, took the blame off him for the firearm. But why didn't he get fucking jailed? There's no law because you're 70 year old. If you've got a firearm, so if you're, if you're threatened to be a firearm 70 year old or 20 year old, you still get the same fucking jail sentence. I don't know that well, we know how they get off because they work with the police. Well, the, the informers are not 79 on, 32 thumbs. Don't forget to push the like buttons, guys. I forgot to tell you, so it makes me the channel look a lot better. I'm giving you the news. I've got a lot more to put on about it, so uh, I'm not, I'm, I'll probably put another one tomorrow on for now at the water, uh, about it because there's a lot more there. I've got to dig out uh, videos and stuff, but you've seen the one today where he's grassing. Again, they're pulling the police on people. I think we've got another four recordings, really bad. But yeah, this, they were trying to say, oh, he's a good man and all that shit. No, he's not. He's a wrong. And that's why he's in Philippines, locked in there for abusing kids over there. I think he didn't abuse them physically. Uh, if he said silly, I think he was making them box or something over that way. So the man who was working with him over there, who was a Philippine bloke, my friend little John, he, he lives over there six months a year with his wife, got three kids over there. And he said, Oh, the other Brian, if you run, there's a shoot, you kill you. They don't give a fuck. There's, there's a new MP they've got to open up. So it's a new, new, what they call it. No, not MP, Prime Minister, whatever he's called. New Prime Minister. It's lethal. He said, well, This was about six months ago. He said, In the last six months, there's been 60 people killed, there's been about 100 shot. So they don't, they don't give a shit, they don't, what they do is they shoot first, then ask questions over here, he said, it's totally different. So you can't get away with it, and he said, anything to do with abusing children, you can get you can get life off, you can get the third year for it, he said. He said, so he might get life off because of the crimes he's done in London, sorry, London, the crimes he's done in England, they check his record from over there to over here, then you have to give him it, the police have to give him it. So if they look at his record, and fucking up all the stuff he's done, but you've seen people, Probably still contacting the Philippines, which and I wouldn't contact them. But he's in jail now. The, the minimum sentence he's going to be looking at could be eight, eight to ten years. Someone John was telling me he said, he said for what he's done over there. But he was also 
grooming young girls when he was going out with the girls and stuff. And then he was giving them drugs. That's gone off again. It's gone off. Nightmare. I don't know what's wrong with this. I've been here all night. If it goes off again, guys, I'm just going to leave it because it's driving me mental. Yeah, it's gone off again. Nightmare. It's a lie or something. Good wire. I think it's a wire. It's been in there now. No, back on. Back on. Back on. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh, I just think that's more. Back on. Yeah, it's hard to do, like. Yeah, 70 on, guys. Don't forget to push like buttons. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. 33 thumbs up. It's, it's back on. It's, I think there's a wire loose on the, in the, the back. I think a couple of weeks ago, Eli come in. He was in here. And he stood on the wire here. And I think he's pulled stretched the wire. And I think maybe a little bit of wire's coming out. Lauren Brock, people from Mums about an issue. Joke is to rock the rock. Thank you, Emma. Here's a lady. You okay, here is a lady. Uh, nervous, nervous. Really, to me. That's just after that. That's him. After us, nervous, nervous. Come in here. That's you, tin files. Did he crank? I agree, I heard it, I agree, I never told my mother any of my problems. I think it could be to do with the world because freedom has just been ended and put on two only fools and horses, but now he's gone back on your life. Oh, so how crazy is that? It's it sad might be dead, might be the Russians. The Russians are trying to get me. They want me to infiltrate our house. <laughs> They're trying to bug us. Tin foils blew the tin foils blew up the world. All the tin foil he's took. He's got millions of it in his bin. <laughs> the tin foil man telling tin foil. So tin foil every time it always has to go and get fucking idiot. <laughs> Give him a black eye. Yeah. Darren main buffering 1999 data, and that's when you know the gremlins are at work. I think they, I think it is the gremlins. I think they're trying to block us to come on. I definitely do. They don't like what we're doing. They fucking hate the truth coming out on the little rats. The rats in the back. Chipping away, ding, 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 ding. But then meet your rats. What rats do? Is rats, the survival in, uh, the experts, absolute uh, survival experts. So the the last thing to leave a, a ship they used to think was a rat. So they'd like if there was loads of rats on the ship, they won't go on. There's no chance we we're going to sink. So if the rats leave the sink, sink leave the ship. Like, oh fucking hell, we're going to sink. So that's what they used to think. But the rats survive. They eat anything, rats. We put them in the nuclear, they put them in Chernobyl over there, they all survived with the nuclear waste. They can eat the fucking, they can eat the stuff, the nuclear waste, and fucking survive off that. Can eat, they can eat anything, you can poison them. And the next day you have to give them another different type of poison because they can get used to the poisoning. They're so, they can adapt to anything they said. Animals ruled the world for 160 million, 160 million years. I think it was 160 million years ago. So, and then, you can, um, Humans have ruled the world for so many years. Next is going to be the insects and rats, the only two, the cockroaches and stuff, the only two, two the only ones that will survive, a nuclear fallout. That's what's next. So it'll be Decker Higgy, Jamie Boyle, <laughs> Charlie. Oh, okay, no. The rats are leaving the ship. The rats are, the rats are, the rats are all shit themselves now. Because every time I come on, they have 100% facts and proof that the kid does their heads in. You come on with only half a story, you look like an idiot. But you can back it up with the telephone calls. Well, who's on the telephone call? Okay, it's like a rigging in it, talking, you know, to buy a mouth. Shitty ass, shitty self. 
35 thumbs up. Don't forget to push the like button, guys. I'm gonna have more to put on tomorrow, but I'm struggling tonight because it's going off and on and off and on. It's fucking driving us all around the bend, I think. Have you anyone got any questions? I'll go up for it. Times mark and it go for you. You don't only have to kick a dog, so many times mark. And now, if you keep kicking a dog, the dog's gonna bite your back. You know, you can, it's like you can back up, break it right into the corner and it'll end up attacking you. You know, it's a really tiny little thing, it'll go straight for your throat to say. I don't know if it's an old wife's tale, that, but. Yeah, I miss my Emerson. Don't be chewed. Don't be chewed. It. No, he's not chewed yet. What he done is he, he walked around and he actually he he, he walked and he's, he's that fucking thick beside him. He pulled like that and the whole telly started moving the back of the telly like the, 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 the computer and that was in the wall here, so the wire here. Stay on now. So it must be that. It might not be that, it might be just something else. Darren is like an old 45 record scratch to death. Sounds as if, yeah, he does, mate. He talks some shite to me. Yeah, the both of them, mate, the voices go right fucking through you, don't you? So I was, Teddy's missus went, oh, my sister said, oh, his voice, get him off. Fucking hell, Teddy, she said, get him off. His voice goes through me. So somebody said, it's like the old uh, Jaws movie where Robert Shaw in and Nick Nolte and the go. Is it Robert Shaw and Nick Nolte, I think? And the go. No, oh, that's the demon. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. So, yeah, it's the other one. Um, uh, Richard Dreyfus is in here. He scratches his fingers on the blackboard. So, you imagine your fingers on the blackboard scratching. So that's Jamie Boyle's voice, that. Okay, McCallum, evening, mate. Hope you're okay. Eli's, yeah, Eli's the fucking name. He's the gremlin, Eli. Fucking big gremlin. If he gets old, you've got no chance. The lock on them jaws, you're on them. They're good monstrous. His teeth are huge. Yeah, they can survive anything, cockroaches. They're unbelievable. They eat, they eat themselves. They can eat parts of their own body and survive. And they're, they're unreal. They can bite the leg. They can cut the legs off of everything. They can just still walk about. I don't know how. They must have fucking bionic ones. They can still move about without the legs bit off. And they're all sorts of crazy how they can survive. You could work out how they look at spiders. You, you put the leg, you pull the bullet, they lose a leg, and then they grow it back on. Imagine if we could adapt to that. It shows you how long they've been around, doesn't it? It shows you how good they are. We get our leg pulled off, we just bleed to death. Fucking full of calls tonight. Oh, they have been like it. Yeah, cockroaches survive. Cockroach, you fucking cockroach, remember that? Frank out of Rocky, not Rocky, out the um, Scarface. Scarface. Have you got the year ho? He said, I've got the year and I've got the money. Good that, anyway. He threw him out the helicopter, didn't he? That was that was, that was tinfoil getting thrown out the helicopter, wasn't it? The rat. They tried to put a rope around his neck and threw him out the helicopter and broke his neck and threw him in the sea. What happens to rats? They always get caught rats in the end. In the end, they always get caught. And they always get paid back. And all the old films are black and white ones. And they always see them getting caught at the very end. Or in the eye, eye or rear films. It's just as they think it's safe to go back in the house. And you all hear... Wiped out in two seconds. All the life they've got over the shoulders because all the dirty low life tricks they've done. Getting people locked up. Getting people in jail. Getting people... Um, Set up with drugs and stuff like that. What an evil, horrible man he is. Well, I thought I was getting locked. Jamie, I thought I was getting locked up tomorrow. God, it's nearly 12. It's after this homework, is it not? It's only 
Johnny Tams come back. Tam, 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 Tony eight o'clock. So when he got four hours to go, I'm waiting for to get locked up. So I wake up in the morning with the follow police are all over the front going, then, then, then. It was us last night. It was us lot. It was us watching you. Dan, uh, Dan's changed since I did broad rock. Broad rock. But he's on there when he was saying, the young girl, he said, how old are you? She went 13. And you can tell she was giggling, that, that giggling was out, just fucking go through me, it was those three new lasses. The giggle like fucked on them, just for nothing. He, he, he just started laughing like a little kid. And he goes, why don't me and you, after this live, go upstairs to my house and have mad passionate sex? It's 13 year old, then a 14 year old on another night. I watched about three in a row, didn't watch them all. It's fast forward to what he said, I went, fucking hell. And then he goes to a 14, 15 year old, he goes, how old are you, Shit, I'm nearly 15. That's it. I've had enough. I can't do anymore. I'm uh, off again. That's enough now. Can't do anymore. It's driving me mental. That's it, love. I can't do anymore. Yeah, I can. I think it's something to do with the bloody. Uh... Oh, 